Hey everybody, I uh, want to make this video about the Beatles White Album. So I wore my white t-shirt and uh, got all my White Albums over here. So I'm going to uh, show you my White Albums. Um, first and foremost, the White Album came out in 1968 and it came out in this um, all white sleeve that was designed by Richard Hamilton. And each one came with, well, all the early pressings came with a, a stamped number. This happens to be the um, 2014 mono remaster, but they still came with the uh, stamp number there. And I don't know if you can see it on my camera, but I'll try to put it in the light here. There you go, you can kind of see it. And it's embossed here with, it says, The Beatles. And uh, you open it up. And if it was 1968, you would see, wow, there's a lot of songs on here. And you get the four portraits of the Beatles themselves. This happens to be a mono um, pressing, and so it has the top loading um, record things with the black sleeves. And uh, so the White Album. Oh, by the way, it also it came with a poster, which you can see on my wall right here. And that's a reproduction. Um, I believe that's the one that actually goes with this set. And I just decided to frame it on my wall. And it also came with four. Let me see if I can find them. Individual shots of the Beatles. I said Beatles very weird there. The Beatles. <laughs> but here they are. There's John. Very famous shot, John. Paul, another very famous shot. These are all famous shots. You got George, looking cool. And of course, Ringo with his frilly, uh, lacy shirt on underneath there. So, the White Album was obviously a huge deal in 1968. It was the first double album from the Beatles. It wasn't the first rock double album that belongs to, I think, actually, maybe, was it Donovan? Or actually, maybe it was Blonde. I guess it was either Blonde on Blonde by Bob Dylan. Maybe it was Blonde on Blonde. We'll say that. It was Blonde on Blonde by Bob Dylan was the first uh, rock double album. And then Donovan also put one out called uh, A Gift from a Flower to a Garden or something like that. Um, anyway, the White Album. Um, double album filled with tons of songs. And it's one of my favorite Beatles albums, that's for sure. I listen to this album whole lot I'm sure all of you do too as well because there's just so much on this record um, just different styles there's just straight up rock there's blues rock there's a little bit of like country country tinge with like Rocky Raccoon um, there's like satirical rock with like piggies and bungalow bill um, there's a bunch of ballads uh, it's just it's just a really interesting um, record and um, yeah, so that's the background on the White Album. And uh, like I said, this is the Mono, 2014 Mono pressing, which I like a whole lot. I think this sounds really good. They did a really fantastic job um, on the Mono remasters, I think. Um, for my money, I listen to this one quite a lot. Um, it just sounds really good. So I'll show you what the, what the records look like, if I can get this out. And like I said, it's a top loading sleeve, which is how the original British uh, mottos came. And they come in these black sleeves, which I think is pretty cool. And here is the record. It's got that, the newish, the new kind of darker green apple label. Yeah, it's amazing when you put the vinyl in the sun, how like the littlest specks of dust just show up, but I promise these are clean and they sound great. Um, so that's the mono, 2014 mono uh, remaster of the White Album. Uh, and then I will show you the stereo remaster. And as you can tell, maybe I'm starting with the, uh, the most common to the rarer of the white albums go with that first here's the stereo now i realize i'm showing the white album but it's showing the cover it's just gonna look the same every single time so they're different shades of white though i will say that 
Here's the stereo. It's got the exact same thing on the inside. These are a little bit not, they're not, they're a little bit lighter gray, I suppose. And again, this also comes with the four individual photos and the poster. And uh, I'll show you the vinyl. This is normally like the side loading, as almost all the other items are. And again, the black package and the same green label. So, there you go. And this item actually happens to be one that was, um, it was printed in, made in Germany. Or actually, Germany, or maybe it's Holland. I think actually it's Germany. But anyway, the new, the remasters, if you get the ones that were made in Germany, or made in like Holland or something like that, these are the better sounding ones. Um, from what I read online and what I've experienced, that is totally true. Um, so if you can find these, pick them up. I know a lot of times Barnes & Noble, the bookstore, has these ones that are um, made in Europe or Germany or whatever. So that's the stereo. And again, that sounds really good. Um, the remaster sounds really, really nice. Um, but the best sounding white album for me that I personally own, and I'm sure I've talked about a lot to you, all of you guys, is this, the German pressing of the white album. Original German. And uh, it's, it's got the stamp number on there. My copy is a little bit worse for wear. It's, it's got some major spine damage, but the records sound great, so that's all I care about. And uh, this is interesting. So this is stereo, but it has these fold-over flaps, and it's a top-loading um, sleeve, which is interesting for the for a stereo. But I guess the German pressings did that. And again, it comes in a black sleeve here, and here's the label. So you can see it's that little, it's that more traditional, like kind of lighter, bright green. And it's German because it's got this little box here. It says Gemma, G-E-M-A. And I don't know exactly when this pressing is. This might be like early 70s uh, or maybe late 60s. It's, it's not an original 68 pressing, but this sounds so good. Um, the stereo image is just so wide uh, and the bass is really solid too. So. I'm sure maybe I'm repeating myself a lot, but when I'm trying to describe to me what sounds the best in a pressing, those are the two things I really look for. Solid sounding bass and a really wide stereo image. And uh, this definitely has that. Um, I was looking it up to find this used, obviously, because I wasn't around when it first came out, but I found it used. And uh, like I said, the actual sleeve's not in the best condition, but the records are in really, really good condition. Um, so I was happy to find that. And uh, it didn't come with the four individual photos or the poster, but that's okay, because uh, I have so many different versions of the Wild Album that did come with the poster and the individual photos that I've got enough for one person to own. In fact, I think I already have too many. That's why I framed that one, because I was like, well, you know, it sucks when they're, it's just stuck inside the sleeve and I don't get to look at it. So put it up there. It's nice to look at every day because it has so many different photos on it. Okay, now on to my second favorite sounding wide album. And this is um, an American release. And the difference on this cover is it has the Beatles. It's not embossed. It's in gray. It says the Beatles and it doesn't have a number. And uh, here's the inside. Now this is a capital U.S. pressing, and it is on, as I'm sure a lot of you know, my favorite, my current favorite obsession, it's on the purple capital label, which was, these are late 70s, early 80s pressings, and this one happens to be um, one that's been mastered by Wally, and uh, it says that on the inner groove here, it says uh, mastered by Wally, which it's... Those are some of my favorite um, pressings are the ones that are Master by Wally. And this is a really, really good sounding white album. Um, it's not as good as the German pressing, just, and I will say that the only difference is, is the stereo image isn't quite as wide on this, um, but this has really good bass. In fact, this might have better low end to mid range than the German pressing. Uh, so it's just overall, it's a really, really good sounding white album. I really, uh, I'm so happy I have this in my collection. In fact, I think in the recent, probably like the last maybe two two months or so, this is my go-to white album um, to listen to. 
Uh, I think just because my I think I think I know why. My German copy, um, that's the most I've ever paid for any single vinyl in my life. I've never I won't say how much it was, but it was more than I'm ever going to pay ever again. But I really wanted a German um, version of the White Album because I read so much about how it's like just the best sounding White Album you can get. So I paid what I paid for it. Um, so I think I tend to not listen to it as much because I'm afraid of like ruining it for some reason. That's so dumb. I realize how dumb that is because records are, um, in my opinion, they're meant to be listened to, obviously. And uh, that's, of course, unless you want to co just collect them and you just want to keep them pristine. Maybe you want to keep them sealed. Like I know another um, guy on here who posts a lot of stuff, I mean, Mr. Mayo or Joe, he really enjoys collecting sealed records and he wants to keep them that way. And that's, you know what? That's how he likes to have them. And that's cool. So go for it. But um, me personally, uh, first of all, I don't own any sealed records. And, um, but I think if you have a record, it's good to play it. And uh, the German one, is for some reason the one that I go against my own philosophy and I've decided not to play it as much. Maybe I'm gonna stop doing that. But uh, anyway, because of that, this Capital Purple label gets a little bit more play than the German one. So uh, that was a long little spiel there. And by the way, back to the sealed record thing. Um, I bet someday, maybe if I ever find, I don't actually, I don't think I've ever actually found a Beatles album sealed in a shop ever. But if I ever did find one, I bet I would probably bring it home and keep it sealed because it's cool to have a sealed Beatles album. That's exactly how it would have been when you bought it in the store. Um, and I have all the albums, you know? If it was a sealed album um, with like a pressing that I'd never heard, then maybe I would open it. Actually, I would definitely open it. But, you know, by the way, if you ever see me lean in like that, it's because my computer goes to sleep and so I have to move the mouse around. It. Anyway, I'm telling you guys a lot more information than I ever have before, but that's all right. We're all here to uh, experience this together. Okay, uh, here's another version of the White Album. This is um, an American, um, I think this is a first pressing. Um, this actually belonged to my dad. So has a lot of uh, sentimental value to me. But actually, it's not a first pressing. You know how I know that. It doesn't have a, a number stamped on here. But it is an early probably like late 60s, early 70s American pressing. Uh, and it's got the Beatles embossed here. And this is in pretty rough shape, as you can tell. It's got a lot of wear here and whatever. And my dad uh, must have bought it used because it's got someone else's name up here. Unless this is a lady friend that he had that I'm not aware of. But uh, anyway, this did have the uh, four portraits and the poster. And those are currently with my brother he wanted them so that's cool but there's the inside of the, the record and I'll show you the label of course it's on Apple as always and uh, yeah there you go and this this is um, unfortunately it's, it's not one of the best sounding white albums I've ever heard and uh, Although it's the first White Album I ever heard, I will say that. I remember being like seven or eight years old and my dad had a record player set up in his room and I walked in there and for some reason I, I chose this record. I remember putting on uh, disc one, side two, where it starts with Martha My Dear because I was obsessed with Martha My Dear. I remember listening to it, but I, the funny thing is his record player, I don't know why, but he must not have told me or I must, I don't know, I just was messed up. I was playing the record, but I didn't have the amp on, but I was getting sound, so I was hearing it like super faintly. I could hear it. it I could just hear like a bare, like a little bit of a signal. And that's how I listened to it. <laughs> and I, I liked it either way. So this this copy has a lot of uh, sentimental value for me. Sadly, I don't listen to it all that much these days, but I'm really happy that I have it. So that's the uh, American pressing of uh, the White Album on Apple. Okay, so now we're getting into uh, the oddball of the collection here. Um, I actually had um, a fan send this to me. A fan, I shouldn't say that. Um, I do a radio show, and it's called Needle Meets Vinyl, and a lot of really, really nice people sometimes will send me stuff. And I had this, this person from 
um, Venezuela, he sent me this white album. So this is a white album that was made in Venezuela. And it's really, really cool. It's the, the cardboard is super, super thick, which, um, which is pretty awesome. And it's got the Beatles in black here. And then up here it says stereo. And then the cool thing is it also has a stamped number. So let's see if you can see that. I got some weird light going on here. So it's 4,518, which is kind of cool. And then if you look on the back, it says made in Venezuela. Open it up and it's just like all the other white albums except this, these are, the, the font here is just really, really small and it doesn't have any of this information below this, you know, like produced by George Martin and uh, all the legal information about, you know, Northern songs and all that kind of stuff. And it's got the four portraits of the Beatles and it's in this dark black and white here. And it doesn't have a poster and it doesn't have um, any of the individual Beatle portraits, but that's okay. And it comes in these bags, kind of like the old um, Columbia records. I know a lot of those old Columbia records came in these bags. But the label, the labels are really, really cool. They're these like orangish red Parlophone labels. And uh, you can see if I can get like a close up shot here that's not blurry. It's kind of hard to do because of this light. There you go. So these labels are really cool. Um, now, unfortunately, this sounds absolutely terrible. <laughs> when you put it on, it's, you can tell it's like it was pressed from like maybe like a fourth or fifth generation tape. So it's very like, it has a very distant sound. It's not very sharp, I would say. Uh, and it's, it's basically lacking in everything you'd want. It doesn't, the highs are pretty shrill. The lows are barely there. Um, but it's really cool to have this. And it was actually, I've, list, I've listened to it a bunch of times because it's, it's fun to listen to because it's just a different take on the wide album. Um, you know what I find with like some of these like not so good pressings? Um, especially with Beatles albums, uh, you realize how good the songs are because it doesn't matter what the audio source, if the audio is really crappy, the songs are so good, you still find yourself enjoying the album. I mean, I still enjoy listening to this and, uh, I was really thankful for this person sending this to me. Um, it was like one of the best surprises I've ever had in the last like two or three years. So it was really, really cool of them to do that. And I really, uh, yeah, I really, I just cherish this album in my collection. And, uh, I mean, I don't think I would ever come across this in a record shop ever in my whole lifetime, probably. I very rarely ever see, like, a, a foreign pressing of a, a Beatles album. So, uh, yeah, so that's the White Album, made in Venezuela. And I don't know what year it was pressed or anything like that. I haven't really done that much research. So, if any of you know any information about these uh, reddish, orangish, Parlophone label white albums from Venezuela. Please let me know in the comments below. And uh, this is a little bit just an extra added thing on here. This is a bootleg. Um, it's it's a newish bootleg, and it's called the Beatles White Album Unplugged. And it has the four portraits on the cover, and there's the back. And it's a cool little collection. It's all the demos the Beatles made at George's house um, right after they got back from India. They recorded a bunch of demos. Um, it's got a lot of John songs. We got Year Blues, uh, Mother Nature's Son, Everybody Got Something to Hide My Monkey. I mumbled that so hard. Everybody's Got Something to Hide Except for Me and My Monkey. Sexy Sadie, Helter Skelter. Helter Skelter isn't from the um, the demos at George's house. It's actually like a, it's from like a film that was made at Abbey Road at EMI. Um, and it's just the audio of this film that they're filming John talking to George Martin. And in the background, you hear Paul working on Helter Skelter, um, which is actually really cool to hear. So anyway, this is a really cool um, album to have. And it's not complete. It's not all the demos they made. There's actually more demos, um, some of which are on Beatles Anthology 3. So if you want to hear those as well, that's uh, cool to listen to. So anyway, those are all of my copies of the White Album. So I own six, and I hope to own more. 
in the future because it's fun to it's fun to have all kinds of different pressings. Um, that's like one of the, the most the joys I get because it's like I remember I think it was about maybe like two years ago I finally I finally got all the Beatles British um, pressings of their albums all their official albums I remember getting them all and I was like oh man okay I got them all now what well then I was like well I want to get all the US um, US editions of the Beatles albums I got those then it started getting into okay well I'm going to try to get some imports and that is proven to be a lot harder than I thought then I got into this whole idea of different pressings, um, and that's where everything's just expanded. And uh, because of a lot of these YouTube videos that a lot of you have made, um, I've even discovered more Beatles albums that I would like to collect. So collecting vinyl, it's just it's so much fun, uh, and uh, it's endless. I mean, you could go, you you can you could try to get every single thing ever made by the Beatles, but you'd never be able to do it. So uh, I like that aspect of it, that I'm never going to be able to have uh, every single thing made. And I don't want every single thing made, to be honest with you, because uh, it's fun to find brand new things every single time you walk into a record shop. I mean, a lot of times I walk into a record store and I don't find anything that I need or want. And, um, but then there's those random times where I walk in and you see something like you've never seen before. Like but a couple weekends ago when I made the video about the Sgt. Pepper uh, purple label. I didn't think I'd ever find something like that. And I did, and that was really cool to find. So anyway, here's my video about the White Albums. And uh, what's your favorite version of the White Album or pressing? I'd love to know. So uh, comment down below. White Album. All right.